concept of positive patients. And there what you see is in fact that there is no clear difference in outcome, whether you reach or you don't reach a PCR. And here are the curves for the hormone receptor negative patients, where you start to see a separation of the curves. So there is some suggestion that pathological complete remission is probably a robust surrogate only in HER2 positive hormone receptor negative disease. Now, of course, we need to know who are the patients who are exquisitely sensitive to dual HER2 blockade because this is going to be an expensive treatment. I can skip the slides here quickly because I showed them this morning. I told you that in the NEOSphere trial, there was an extensive biomarker research program and no biomarker was found. Very worrisome. It, it tells me that we need to find better ways of identifying biomarkers of response because this was a really well done job and nothing emerged that can be helpful to the clinician. I also briefly summarized this morning the results of an imaging study that we conducted in Neoalto, where we could see big differences between patients after two weeks of trastuzumab or lapatinib or the two drugs. Some patients having a complete metabolic shutdown and others absolutely no modification in their SUV on PET. So imaging can perhaps start helping us now we have to look into the biopsies that we have done at day 15, but of course this is work that is still ongoing. I skip this. So what I think is that perhaps in the future, one way to run smarter clinical trials could be to get rid of patients who are going to do well with your best drugs of today. And maybe if we can validate what we saw in Neoalto, Maybe a way to do that would be to do a PET scan. So you give dual HER2 blockade. After two weeks, you repeat a PET. The PET shows a complete metabolic response. These patients are off. You don't need to add other drugs. You don't need to study perhaps a PI3K inhibitor or another new agent. And then you focus the development of your new drugs on the patients who do not show this dramatic response. So that's the kind of thinking that we are currently having in the Breast International Group because we really believe that we cannot continue developing new drugs the way we do today. It doesn't make sense that we add, we add, we add, we add, and then we can no longer afford the treatment from a financial point of view. Okay, I think I stop here because I don't want to be too long and I want to leave some time for the discussion. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Bicar, for this high-quality presentation on uh, breast cancer.